the Shox Open Fit or the Clear Audio Arc 2 or the Oladance OWS? How about the One Audio Open Rock or the Sivga S01 that we looked at a few weeks back? I said it before guys and I'll say it again, 2023 has been the year of air conduction exercise headphones. Bone conduction, <laughs> that's like ancient tech, so yesterday. Besides, bone conduction kind of sucks in the audio quality department anyway and has even worse bass. So it's no wonder buyers have been flocking over to this new craze. And so in case you haven't noticed, the year is almost over and we've had lots of great products in this category, but guess who waited to crash the air conduction party and try to one up everybody else? And obviously, you already know this from the title, but this, my friends, is the Soundcore Aerofit and Aerofit Pro. Watch this video to find out what they are and why they're so significant and whether or not you should buy them. Let's get this. On my left here is the Aerofit Pro and this thing retails for $170 and the regular Aerofit retails for $130. And both of these can be found in four colorways. Bluetooth 5.3 on board for both of these have SBC and AAC support, while the Pro has LDAC and spatial audio. Both of these also do multi-point Bluetooth connection, by the way. Uh, in the business end of things, the Pro has a 16.2 millimeter uh, dynamic driver here doing all the grunt work, while the regular has a 14 millimeter, not a slouch either. We'll talk about sound quality later on in the episode. Battery life for the Pro, I got around 13.1 hours at 65% volume, while the regular hits about 10.6 hours under the same conditions. In terms of water resistance, the Aerofit has IPX7, while the Pro comes in a little bit lower at IPX5. Surprise, surprise. But note that neither of these have any kind of dust resistance. Controlling the devices are a little bit different as well with the Pro using buttons at the top right here or a single button per side that accepts single double taps or presses and you can customize that. With the regular Aerofit, it has a touchpad on the side that you can customize for the single double triple tap uh, configuration. Both of these have USB-C charging. This one's at the back and this one is towards the front, but there is no wireless charging even though the flat surfaces would have been perfect for it. Aside from the obvious dimensional differences between the two, both of these in your hand feel identical from the build to the plastics to the grippability. Is that even a word? But they feel really great in the hand. Even the thickness is kept in check. Most workout earbuds, they tend to be thick or at least the cases, but these you can slip in your pockets really easily. Obviously, I prefer this one because, you know, it is smaller, almost looking like a Milano wafer or something. But this is also pretty thin and it comes with a spring-loaded lid, whereas the regular Aerofit, my goodness, you're going to have to use your, all your finger muscles to pop it open like a plebeian. Beginning with the regular Aerofit, between the two models, this actually reminds me the most of a pair of Shox Run Free lights uh, in terms of profile and just the overall size. Here's the battery compartment, and this is a titanium rod. Both of them have it. Titanium piece here that is not moldable, but very flexible, that actually spreads out the weight of your whole earbud. It's really light to begin with, guys. It spreads it out really nicely. And here, obviously, is the control unit and the audio compartment. Here's the touch panel right there where the Soundcore logo is. I like this faux metal piece right here, little accent that looks metal, but it's actually plastic. And it's actually a nice surface for you to grip, like adjust this in your ear, remove it, and slot it over your earlobe and such like that. It's nice to have a good purchase. On the back end here, this is what Soundcore has always been good at. They are very stylistic and artsy with their mesh protector grill right there. Um, in this case, it looks kind of floral. Nice, right? Charging connectors right there. Um, overall, this thing feels really nice. They have some really nice uh, skin-friendly uh, PU as well on this. The Pro model is a little bit bulkier, as you can see side by side right here. And if you think that the angle of attack, you know, towards your ears is a little bit sharper on the Pro, they are identical. If you line them up, they are the same. It's just an illusion by the housing right here. So it's bigger because of the larger driver, as we mentioned before. Bigger battery, same titanium uh, bridge right there, same mesh grill design, you know, connectors and all that. There is a touch button right here. Um, the grip here is a little bit different too, the housing, as you can see. And actually, I prefer, again, the regular one over this one. But where this differs from pretty much, not just this model, the regular model, but pretty much every exercise workout your butts out there is this that's included in the box. This is the neck band. And Soundcore is smart enough to mark the right side with a red dot, which is really cool. And these are connected both mechanically and magnetically. And let me try to put on the other one as well. And how this differs from, say, Shox, which has a fixed 
a length or you have to buy two different sizes that these are adjustable guys look at that it's a slider it's also titanium these things are super strong and you can just adjust this based on the shape of your neck your head or what you're wearing at a given time say if you're wearing like collars or hoodie um, these will prevent them from bumping up too much about it and one thing i mentioned earlier about grip with the headbands on it is so much faster to insert this over ears than just um, by itself one thing that Soundcore I think missed is they have a case for the earbuds but there is no case solution for the neckband or if you have these connected I can't fit this and I have to carry these separately what the heck Outside doing the Bluetooth range test and for those of you who are new to this this is a very unscientific test where we take headphones and earbuds outdoors to see how their Bluetooth protocols handle physical range as well as physical barriers and how you know they hang on to signals and such like that right now I have collective soul and if you don't like this song you're dead to me <laughs> it's collective soul doing shine it's like a growing up song in my in my lifetime anyways I have the regular arrow fits I just noticed they don't fit very well with hats on. It's really hard to get a proper fit. They pop out from time to time. If your hat shifts, it, it's pretty much done. You have to readjust it. So anyways, these have Bluetooth 5.3. Let me crank up the volume a bit. So, I can... so right here, hmm, usually this is where 5.3 ends, around 37, 38. Well, spoke too soon. 40, 42 feet maybe is when I got a cut off still playing a little bit but more sputtery than uh, it's worth listening to but you know we're still here it hasn't disconnected yet completely so it's hanging on really nice um, again you can see the fit of these in my ears later when we switch in a few seconds we switch to the AeroFit Pros uh, you can tell the difference in the profile this resembles more of the Open Run Open Run Pro I can't remember I can never remember the name of the shocks but anyways let's take this for a run stable as heck man it's just stable especially once you dial in a good fit it's pretty darn awesome i do wish that this was slightly moldable even though you know it's an in thing now to have titanium uh hooks and all and neck bands and whatnot i think to really truly customize uh, each person's uh, shape and to each person's shape of their skull and their ears you need something moldable you can't just have something one size fits all that kind of kind of crap because in this case as you know my head expands when i run when i warm up or as it shrinks when it gets cold uh, things are going to change if my glasses shift or if my hat shifts like in this case i just mentioned before yeah you you're constantly fiddling around with the the fit of these but anyways let's swap over to the pro models and see how that fares I've switched over to the Pro and where I'm standing right now it's around 25 feet away from the media source. My phone is at the end of my deck right there past the mess. We're slowly getting for winter. One of my favorite times of the year actually. Not because of Christmas but because of the snowstorms. Yes. Bluetooth 5.3 we have on this just like the AeroFit regular and the signal. This is where the regular fit died or had sputtering. And I'm still going strong on these. Oh my goodness not a single like dropout oh my goodness those people are wondering why I'm smiling is it okay to smile here in the, on a Thursday in Maine in the middle of a work week oh it just got a cut out oh my goodness this is awesome this is really good look at that there's a house between me and the phone oh my word anyways the fit on these, and I'm going to talk about this in the Pro section, it's one of my favorite parts about uh, the Pros. It's a combination or you have two options. You can either do it with a neck band, I'm not sure if you can see that back here, or without it, just like a regular over-the-ear air conduction uh, earbud or earphone. Oh yeah, super stable in this. And of course, you can. The cool thing about this neck band is it's adjustable to fit any neck shape or neck size, or if you have a collar or 
a hoodie. Man, genius. This is what I'm talking about. Earlier, I'm talking about something multiple and customizable. Yeah, here you go. And having the neckband on makes it so much quicker to put on because I find over the, oh, over the ear hooks, like IEMs and exercise earbuds, either it's me, maybe I'm just dexter dexterously, I poor dexterity or hand-eye coordination. Um, sorry, I'm just, oh, I'm winded because, you know, this is not just one take. I've taken, I've done like multiple takes of each of these and I have three, four different uh, earpieces to test. So, yeah. Let's do this backwards a little bit since I already have the pros on. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Hopefully it shows up really well. Or the audio sample shows up well to demonstrate how these mics handle suppression or noise. Um, one car at a time, based on my understanding or my experience with this, one car at a time like this. Testing, testing, one, two, three. The suppression is really good. My voice, the intonation is preserved and uh, I sound pretty nice, but when there's continuous traffic, I notice like one car, car after another, that's when the system seems to like get overwhelmed and then you start hearing a lot of garbling sounds and all that kind of stuff. Here comes UPS. I call them Santa Claus. But anyways, let's switch over to the regular and see how that does. Actually, I lied, but I think you might enjoy this better because I got the uh, shocks open fit out and I wanted to test two, you know, top of the line models back to back and you can see I know it's not apples to apples because the traffic is constantly different but you it'll give you an idea there's no wind by the way between just now and here now there's still no wind it's a it's a nice quiet day you can hear just traffic testing testing one two three test 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 one two three how's that sound you can be the judge of this comment down below which one do you prefer actually between both pro models which would you prefer? And last but definitely not least, we have the regular arrow fits on my head. And testing, testing, one, two, three. It's a pity it's not windy right now because um, it would be nice to show it to you on a sample, uh, audio sample. But uh, when I did test it a few days ago when it was raining, both the Pro and this didn't handle it too well. They entered the mic chambers too easily and just garble everything up. Um, so yeah, if I were to rank it, I hope more traffic comes through. Uh, if I were to rank it, I would say the shocks and then the pros and then this. If you don't think or if you disagree, let me know down in the comments. And I'll probably still think I'm right because this is my show and I'll say what I want, dang it. But anyways, um, you just hear, heard that. It's, it's okay, right? Uh, anyways, thank you so much for being here, guys. Let's head back to the studio and we'll talk more about both of these pieces. These being audio products first and foremost, and just like any other audio product that I review, I usually talk about SQ first or sound quality. But in this case, I really wanted to center your focus on this, the detachable neckband. Because guys, I can't stress how much of a game changer Soundcore's version is. I mean, we've seen similar concepts. I think it was last year or the year before where we looked at the Laval LTS 21 Pro. It was a pretty great idea as a convertible, but was also quite literally rough at the edges. With the AeroFit, Soundcore basically refined both the mating mechanism as well as the functionality of the band itself. I mean, come on, an adjustable titanium slider that looks really nice and then connects to the earbuds with just a click like this, it's pretty darn awesome. Now, I can see hair getting caught in the little holes of the slider right here, but oh, come on, nothing is perfect, right? But otherwise, I think the execution is spot on. And I think a lot of people are really gonna like this. Pricing, at least for the AeroFit Pro, undercuts shocks by $10 and their similar Pro models. Whether you pick the OpenFit or the Open Run Pro, they're both $180 each MSRP. Now, 10 bucks, yeah, doesn't sound like much, right? But think about it, guys. Soundcore has basically given us two kinds of earbuds for the price of one. And where I come from, that's a great deal. Yeah, these are $180, $170, and you get two for one, you crazy, uh, you don't buy now, don't wait for discount, just get it, or you regret when the price go up, buy now, buy now. My last positive is a hesitant one. You see, I have to report that despite the best efforts of its engineers, Soundcore just hasn't cracked the code or created some kind of magical formula of making air conduction sound as good as traditional in your earphones, despite of what their marketing may tell you. 
And it's the whole science bit about how sound waves deteriorate as it passes through space, either through natural decay or being affected by other ambient waves. And so with the current tech that we have at least, sound from the aerofits is constantly fighting with sound from everything else hitting your ears. And so on one hand, and that's the whole beauty of air and bone conduction, is that they're fantastic for situational awareness. You can hear everything that's going on around you. But they suck balls when it comes to the whole listening experience. Now, between the two, I prefer the Aerofit Pro more. It just has more color, more flavor, more wholesomeness. And yes, I know I sound like I'm describing food, but that's just how the more expensive Aerofit rolls. In comparison, if you bring up the Shox Open Fit, this has tinier bass and sounds slightly narrower around the head. And so if the Open Fit was, say, a shoebox, the Aerofit Pro would be a shipping container. Yes, I know I'm exaggerating, but that's how much wider the sound stage is. Now for my favorite part, the negatives. And in no particular order, the standard Aerofit that I have on right now needs more amplification. It just needs more power. By a busy road, for example, with constant traffic going on in the background, like right now, I struggle so much to hear most of my tunes on these, even when I crank it up all the way up to 100%. The pros are a little bit better in this regard, that's why it's just barely outside of the negative zone, but I would say both of these models could really use a little bit more amplification, a little bit more at the top. When I compare it with the Open Fit by Shox though, this trumps both of these in terms of max volume at the expense of detail. So, you know, pick your poison, guys. Less fidelity, higher volume, or less volume, better detail. Speaking of cranking up the volume, at around 85% or greater, the Pro begins to exhibit driver flutter. And that's basically when low frequencies overdrive the woofer, causing a <laughs> sound. And to me, that's really unusual for a sound core. You know, you would think that the larger profile on the Pro would make it so much easier to grab and position onto your ears compared to the regular model. But no, the larger body really gets in the way most of the time it knocks on things, especially if you have glasses like me or have a cap on or have giant rabbit ears. The only solution to this is to use both hands to get the earbud on like this or to transform it into the neckband mode. And that way it is really, really fast. You don't even have to finagle with it. You just slip it on and it is done. I'm rather disappointed that the neck band doesn't work with the regular Aerofit. There's just no slot for it at the bottom. And in some ways, I prefer the regular model and also like the neck band as well. But I think Soundcore basically shafted a lot of buyers by making you choose one over the other. And they shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have kept the band exclusive to just one model because here's what I think. As they release Gen 2 and other offshoot versions in the future, I think it would have been cool to have the neck band or at least the option of the neck band, you know, the slot itself, as something the entire Aerofit ecosystem could use, could show off and be unique to Soundcore. With its ingenious neck band, the Soundcore Aerofit Pro breaks the mold by being a convertible workout earbud that works surprisingly well. I mean, you want to wear it freely around each ear? Just go for it. You want absolutely the most secure fit and ease of use? Just snap on the neck band like so. And sure, it can be seen as an answer to a question no one has asked yet, but here's the thing. For the price of a pair of shocks, you get two devices in one. So overall, I think the Pro sounds above average. The regular Aerofit is just average. Both of these are built amazingly. Both have good battery life and they look pretty nice to boot. I would say it's not bad for Soundcore's first try, isn't it? Now, if you need your tunes while doing lap swims or open water swims, then neither of these will work. For that, I would recommend something like the Creative Outlier Free Pro Plus. This is bone conduction, but it sounds pretty darn nice in the water. You're welcome. And anyways, that's it. I hope to see you back here, guys. Same time, same place. Don't be shy. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this and subs if you like to see more like this. And if you're gullible enough, you could also join the Gear Up membership uh, by clicking join below. I have some cool perks in there for you and there's more coming in the near future. And before you go, guys, remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? If you haven't seen the news, the world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out and God bless.